you've got square peg, round peg, square peg, round peg. Drops on no problem when you put it in the right hole. Hey, welcome back to the shop. I'm Jason, and today we are starting step three of our fuel injection install on my buddy's 64 Ford Fairlane. In the last episode, step two, we got the throttle body, the ECU, and we're talking about the ACES kill shot throttle body and ECU system here. Installed on the car, got it running, and did just a tiny bit of fine tuning. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to be upgrading the ignition system and bring it into the modern age. Currently what we're running is an HEI with vacuum advance. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing the blackjack distributor and blackjack coil from ACES. And here is our distributor. We're gonna to have to take this bad boy apart though because it comes ready to run and set up with mechanical advance. In order for it to be completely controlled by the ECU, we have to make sure to lock out the distributor and phase it correctly so that we get everything set up and ready to go. I already let the car run for quite a while with the factory distributor in there, or not factory, this one, factory or not, doesn't really matter at this point, to make sure that it built a little bit of a learning curve for the cam and the air on this motor. So now all we have to do is get the motor set up to accept this distributor, get it locked out, and fire it back up and start the learn process for the ignition timing. So if this is your first time disassembling a distributor, much like myself, go ahead and pause the video. You can take a look at the link up here to Action Vulture where he has a really, really good video. And it's clear he knows exactly what he's talking about with this bad boy. He shows you how to completely take it down, lock it out. I'm gonna do it too. So if you wanna stick around, that's cool. You can watch me fumble way through this. I'll speed it up just a little, I'm sure. So first things first, they send you some solid directions with your specific type of distributor. I'm sorry, my white balance card is making all kinds of noise over here. Follow your instructions. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get the advance weights and springs off, which means you just gotta pop the cap, just like you would if you were changing your springs for any other timing curve. We're gonna pull the rotor. We'll set this guy to the side. And here are the springs that we gotta get off. We take the springs and the little gold bushings off of there. And again, that's for these counterweights here that wanna swing out like that under centrifugal force, advancing our timing. These can be a little bit of a booger to get off, it would seem. I'll pop out a pick, pop it off this way. There we go. Just get underneath it, it pops right off. There's no shame protecting your eyes. Any mechanic out there will tell you they usually put their safety glasses on after something goes in their eyes. And more than a decade ago, I had LASIK so that I could see again. And I really don't want to ruin that. So I try to put my safety glasses on more often than not. So get your little bushings off, get your springs off. Let's see these weights. We'll slide right off the top. Now we gotta get the springs themselves. Ah! <laughs> All that talk about having my safety glasses on. Why do adults always say you'll poke your eye out? Good thing I had a beard to protect me. Woo! There it is. So you can see the distributor shaft in the middle there that's your advance curve moving. We will need to pull our roll pin. Now this is for a Ford 302, not an HO. So this is the older motor, the Windsor block. This is just what the owner has told me. I, I don't really know what a Windsor block is. So please, the hate mail down in the comments. Yeah, let me know, whatever. We're gonna be pulling this roll pin out here at the bottom. 
You want something to protect your nice finish on here. And then something to also protect your distributor here. There we go. I don't want to set it on the gear to get it out. Some nice soft um, MDF ought to do it. That's working. Okay. Make sure when it pops out, it falls down onto a black mat where it's gonna be impossible to see. Thankfully, it hit my foot, so I knew where it landed. And today ain't even my birthday. <laughs> okay, and then the shaft is gonna come out the bottom. Oh, I guess I forgot, we gotta take this uh, nut off of the bushing here at the top because we're gonna have to go out and spin it around. So right there, that's gotta come off, lock nut. So in your instructions, we're taking this lock nut, washer, and advanced stop bushing off. There we go. Now, since we have our roll pin out, we can drive this up to get that bushing out of there. Okay, my washer must have fallen out the backside. Okay, and this was sitting inside of this advance window here where the bushing was. Now, we need to rotate it over. There's a smaller hole on that side that we're gonna drop this down and into like that. Now, when I rotate this guy, it doesn't move at all. That's the locked out function. Ah, don't push it back down. And because we're gonna be installing the roll pin back in here, you don't need to put the nut back on. In my case, let's see, I think I'm gonna put it back on. Okay, now, and pop our roll pin back in. Got our bushing and our counterweights out. Line it up just the same as we did before. Okay, get your roll pin flush on both sides. We're about ready to uh, put this bad boy in the car. You've got square peg, round peg, square peg, round peg. So there are two ways that you can go about stabbing the distributor. You can mark where your rotor is somewhere on a fixed point of the motor. After you pull your cap off, line that up, put your new distributor in at that point, but you're not gonna know necessarily that you're at the set point, the 15 degrees that they're asking for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull the cap. I know this is spark plug number one right here and I'm gonna rotate the motor over until we come up to TDC on number one and then double check on the balancer that we're set to 15 degrees. Then I'll mark where the cap goes and I will stab the new distributor in that location. We're not going to need advance anymore, at least vacuum advance being that we're going to be digitally controlled. So I'm gonna pull this guy off and we're gonna plug the advance or the, the vacuum port on the throttle body Go ahead and just get this out of the way for now. Spark plug number one is up right here. I guess that's not spark plug so much as it is the wire to number one. That doesn't fit, I'm gonna need a flat blade. I've been fairly honest that these are uh, not my cars. I don't know the firing orders, so I printed it out. On this engine, this is, like I said, I was told the Windsor block. It's the non-HO um, 302 motor. It goes one, three, seven, two, six, five, four, eight. What I'm using is a whiteout pen. This is one of my favorite marking pens in the shop versus a paint pen, because whiteout is gonna come off pretty easily. Not so easy that it's just gonna rub off while you're working on the car, 
but easily enough that with a little bit of cleaner or acetone or something of that nature, it will come off and not leave a mark. When you use a paint pen on everything, you tend to leave paint on it, which is kind of a pain in the butt because you don't always want everything on there. Hopefully I don't regret this decision. Okay, we're gonna mark number one on the distributor itself. Pop this guy on. That is heavy with the coil built in. Now we need to rotate the motor over until we're pointing over there. I'm gonna pull the spark plug because I also want to confirm that we're coming up on compression. Cylinder one, two, three, four is on the passenger side. Five, six, seven, eight on the driver's side. So if you don't have a compression gauge, which it would seem mine doesn't fit, You can just put your finger. Put your finger on it. Yeah. Doesn't matter which finger. Over the spark plug hole and wait for it to push air out. Conversely, you could, man, I've got to have an adapter here somewhere. Conversely, you could put a screwdriver in there and wait for it to come up and press on it. Obviously, don't crank the engine over with the key. Do not do that. Boom! Use your hand. Do it the hard way. That way you're not bending, snapping something in there. Gosh, that would suck. I've heard of people doing that. There are mechanic stories. I'm sure some of you have too. Drop them in the comments. Let everybody else know just how much of a disaster that is. Now, if you happen to be doing spark plugs at the same time, there you go. That would be, whoops, that would be the trick. Cause you'd have the spark plugs out and it would turn over a lot easier. Starting to think I kind of like the idea of just stab it and go, but now nah, we'll do it this way. Ah! Do your best to keep all your fingers. Okay, I can hear air coming out of my compression attachment. Now we have to set the motor up proper timing 15 degrees before I went a little bit past getting that full compression stroke done let me show you what we're looking at down here so you look right down where is it hiding there you can see there's our 15 degree mark on the balancer and our mark on the timing indicator. And up here we are just before TDC. You see all the advance built in to that guy. So here's number one, we're just before. All right, with the distributor set at 15 degrees, we're ready to pull it out and stab our new distributor. In my case, this is a half inch. There we go. Lift this guy up. Inside of our motor. Uh-oh. Is that supposed to stay down there? The gear stayed down there. Always something. There's the camshaft. And there's the distributor gear. Hopefully that's supposed to come out because my new one has a gear on it. Well, I suppose it's always something. Let's see. Yeah, that's supposed to just twist right out. And then our oil pump drive is down there. So there we go. I guess it uh, either wasn't connected very well or maybe this one was supposed to do that. Check that out. Here goes nothing. I would like my wires 
to be on this side to connect to my harness. So I'm going to try to stab it that direction. Make sure you put your assembly loop on your sprocket and your O-ring. It's supposed to be in the box. I didn't see any in mine, but this was also already opened because it got shipped to my friend's house who owns this car, and then he looked at it, and then he brought it here. So it may be at his house. It may have gotten misplaced. I don't know. You may have to adjust your oil pump gear if you can't get it to line up. So bear that in mind, this could take a couple of tries to get everybody lined up. All right, well, I already changed my mind on the wires. The way that the, um, what was the word, the thermostat housing sits, these wires are gonna have to go to the other side. So I'm gonna flip it, have them come up and around the front side like that. I can feel that we're not going down because we're hitting the oil pump gear or drive shaft. There it is. So that dropped in, not pointing at number one, which means we need to rotate that drive gear for the oil pump. All right, to rotate our oil pump, I'm using a quarter inch drive, quarter inch socket, and that fits in there pretty perfectly. So we turned it just a little bit, uh, let's attempt to restab it. Ooh, that's close. It's pointing right where I want it to. Move it a little more. For reference, I'm using a locking extension. Really don't want to drop a uh, socket down inside your motor. Ha! Ah, ah, ha! There it is. Don't touch anything. Don't touch. Don't touch anything. Damn, it's like identical to where the old one was. Almost like they were meant to be home. Okay, important next step. We want to line up our distributor gear right on the contact. So I'll pop up on the screen the instructions and what it's talking about with the paddle wheel. And I'll see if I can't get you a shot here. But basically with this Hall Effect sensor or magnetic pickup sensor, there are eight paddles on there that indicate obviously the eight cylinders. Well, the sensor has a... a I'm guessing it's the magnet, right there in the middle, and you want to line the paddle up with that um, magnet. Let me pull you off of here. Put some light in behind it here. Let's see, you can see these are our paddles, and our magnet is inside there. So we're gonna need to rotate, I can see that that that's pretty close in there. I'm gonna grab a, a mirror so that I can see down in there a little bit better. I can't see past the housing here. Could just rotate all the way over to the side, but then my wires get crushed on that side. Let's go over here. Maybe that side will work and I can see better. Ooh, I can see really good over there. Down right in there. Right, right there. You can see it from the top. I can see it. Maybe you can see it. Either way, take a look up on the instructions. They're on the screen here right now. Okay, that is what we're trying to accomplish. I think we have plenty of room here. We'll be able to move the wiring over to the side to tighten our bolt down. Now, I'm fairly certain this isn't like life or death critical here because we're going to start the motor up and still going to have to rotate the distributor housing to time it to make sure that we're lined up on 15 degrees. You know, you decide how much effort you want to put into making sure that this paddle wheel is as perfect as possible. But I have to imagine that the closer you get things, the less likely it's going to be to have an issue. 
There we go, now we're locked down. Now let's remark number one. It's this guy right here. We're just gonna give her a little boop. Okay, we got our distributor in. We got our wires run neatly back and into our wire pack back there. Next step is to get our coil wire. We're gonna route it down following the plug wires over into this corner. So we have a universal wire that we're gonna cut down once we get the coil mounted over there. Yesterday I had to call it quits. We were at about 120 degrees outside, inside here. We're 105, 107. Let's see, we're, we're looking at around 104-ish now. This is a tough time of year to be working on cars, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And I was just playing done yesterday. So let's take a look at our coil, get that locked down over in the corner and get that wire put on. We're gonna be using some self-tappers to get this driven in. And then we can go back through, once we have our holes set, these make great drill bits too. And we can add nut and bolt that came with this in the kit. So we wanna make sure that our harness is gonna reach. I don't really wanna install it up like this so that water can pool in there. Everything is sealed really nicely here, but regardless, I'd rather not have it vertical and have water pooling and causing any type of corrosion. So I'm gonna be mounting it horizontal here, like that. Then we're gonna bring our wire, like I said, up and around there. We've got some nice dimples in our fender well that will work to get us lined up nice and plumb. And if you're wondering, the hood hinges run down basically flat right here. So they're not going to be in the way of our coil. Now I also have the Killshot ECU power disconnected here as I'm plugging all of this equipment in, mainly because I don't want to make, I do want to make sure that there aren't any interferences that occur or any shorts or anything like that. When you're working on an electrical system, you should have the battery or the power to the system disconnect, disconnected. With the distributor in, set to 15 degrees of uh, static base timing, our coil mounted, plugged in, distributor plugged in, we need to change the wiring inside. I'll throw up a schematic here on the screen so that you can see what I'm talking about, the difference between what we were running and what we are running now. Now that we're not using the carburetor, we don't need choke. We also don't need the HEI power and signal wire. So that's also HEI. This was the old points connections here. I guess not HEI points. What we're gonna do is we're gonna strip down this side of the harness and all we're gonna do is leave the factory temperature gauge and oil pressure gauge. Okay, tuning, spark, basic. We're double checking that our static timing shows 15 degrees there. We're gonna go back into advanced and we're gonna lock our timing. Now it shows right at the top that we're locked. Now we should be able to fire it up. We're gonna verify with the um, timing light that we're set at 15 degrees on the balancer. Let's see if it starts. Not bad, that was close. Okay, now we'll go set the timing to 15 on the balancer. Our timing light is right there. I was basically 
looking like we're a little advanced. So I'm going to have to back that up just a smidge. Wrong way. There we go. Now we're on it. Now that we've got our timing set where we want it, mechanically, we're going to go back in, tuning, spark, advance, we're going to unlock our timing, and we're going to let the kill shot do the work. Unlocked. Now, if you watch, you can see our timing's moving all over as it's trying to get itself warmed up. We'll see what everything looks like after we get up to operating temperature. We'll make sure our IAC comes down, our air fuel ratio looks good, and everything seems to be running well at that point. Woo! Okay, so with our base timing set, I was running into a couple of issues with starting. On this car specifically, I had to adjust the fuel prime, which is the startup fuel and I brought it down, and then I also had to adjust the starting ignition timing. It was set at 15, and the car really didn't like that. Right now, I'm trying to find a balance between about 11, 10 to 12 degrees, we'll call it that. But driving around, the first thing that I notice is that the responsiveness of the pedal is insane. I only drove this car a little bit before with the HEI and the carburetor on it, but just, just pulling out of the driveway, I was giggling with how incredibly responsive it is. I know it's going to be weird to say, but it, it almost responds as fast as my BMW race car does. And that thing, the, the pedal is just hair trigger on that car. So I'm really impressed so far. We'll see what it takes for me to get this adjusted to a comfortable position. Uh, one of the other timing things that I ran into yesterday driving it around was I was getting a bit of knock at heavier load, so I brought my overall um, max timing down. I think it was set between 38 and 40. This engine did not like that. Um, brought it down to 36 and I've had no knock. You can't hear anything. It sounds really good now. So from here, Stay tuned for uh, episode four or part four, and I'll get a little bit more time with the car, a little bit of tuning with it, and hopefully a little bit of time on the phone with ACES if I run into any issues, at least with what I'm trying to do. And I'm gonna give you what I feel like from the installer's perspective, this whole system, the fuel delivery kit, the throttle body, the, um, the distributor and coil, everything all together, what my thoughts are, and then we'll come back again for a part five with the owner after he's had time to enjoy and play with the car and really get his feedback from the owner's perspective of how he felt about it. So like, subscribe, share, let your friends know I messed this car up, I didn't mess it up, whatever you want to say, it's all good. I'll see you in the next video.